He's still on 75. He did not take the lodge exit. We have an active uh, police chase going on. The suspect is fleeing on southbound 75. Uh, he is now in more or less southwest Detroit. The noise and the commotion you hear behind me is the newsroom in full active breaking news mode with various assignment editors, producers, and digital content providers, all monitoring scanners, taking phone calls. We have, I believe, a local four news vehicle following or trailing this fleeing suspect. What the suspect is uh, fleeing from, why he is being pursued at this point, I'm not sure we know. But this, this chase has been going on for quite some time, hasn't it, Brian? I believe this is at least... This is at least 30 minutes old. Not sure the origin point of this. So far, I've not seen any police close to this compact SUV. This is southbound 75 at Clark. Do we know why he's running? Now going back across the highway, reversing course, and now going back northbound on 75 on the service drive skips the entrance ramp there because you can't get back on you saw the orange barrels it's no longer southbound it's northbound there's another chopper you can see following this as well now he's going to turn right and go basically southeast What are we on now? Is this Fort? No, now he's going southbound again. Now he's going west. Southwest Detroit. Go Appears he's trying to go back on southbound 75. Now that we have our first confirmation of uh, police in pursuit in that unmarked vehicle behind the mini SUV or the compact. Police in active pursuit, three car lengths, now four car lengths behind. This is the first visual confirmation of police pursuit that we've had. He appears to be speeding up. Again, southwest Detroit now getting back onto the highway and he's now back on I-75 or is he is he still on a service drive service drive he's on the service drive. now he's going up and over grass through a tree short going around the semi now on an unnamed side street This is where it gets dangerous. This is where people who are in that area don't know that this, uh, there's a high-speed chase coming their way through a residential area. Okay, so he's now on Lafayette. turning left, unnamed side street, again still in southwest Detroit, heading back in the direction of the highway, which you see right there. Now he's back on the adjacent uh, street and or service drive to the highway. The cruiser is, keeps closing in and then let him, letting him gap. He's given him a good eight to 10 car length lead. Now here comes the cruiser again. 
Okay, so now we've got a car in the way. He avoids that white car there. The police go around it as well. Now it's getting tight. Now we've got a red truck in the way and he's gonna go back across the highway. You see the active construction on southbound 75. Now he's pinned. He's got, he's got a car in the way. That guy gets out of the way. We don't know if there was a collision there. Slow moving truck, he wings around him. Now he's back on the northbound 75 side of the highway encountering traffic. One would presume the people that he's going by don't realize this is a police chase until it burns past them. Again, if you're just now joining us on this live stream, Midday Live on Facebook and also live streaming on clickondetroit.com, we have a police chase of unknown origin, a compact SUV, newer model it would appear, uh, being pursued by at least one police car and of course our chopper. And thus far, most of the carnage has been uh, avoided, meaning there hasn't been any dramatic side swipes or head-on collisions that we were witness to. He just passed Livernois. Again, we don't know who he is, why he's running, what he's suspected of, but he is... Uh... Okay, so you saw there the sign, the Bridge to Canada sign. To give you an idea where this is, northbound 75, he's splitting bridge traffic right now. There was an exit sign there a moment ago for the bridge to Canada. He's going to start to bend to the left here. There's the bridge to Canada exit, Canada only. Again, coming around by that pedestrian bridge, it'll come into focus here, you know, the, the, the newer bridge that they built for southwestern Detroit. We'll be coming around the corner toward downtown yet again. It'll be interesting to see what, uh, what direction he goes in from here, whether it is toward downtown or getting on the lodge away from downtown or perhaps trying his luck on 94. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. Tanker truck there. Again, if you're just joining us, you're looking at a live uh, feed from Chopper. This is a small SUV or compact SUV, newer model. We don't know why police are pursuing this guy or woman. Northbound 75 going around downtown. Going to be going by the stadiums here in a second, coming up on Gratiot. You'll have a choice to make of whether to continue on northbound 75, get off at Gratiot, go south on Woodward. Okay, he's getting over to the far right, taking the right shoulder. Ooh, ooh. Barely squeezes that one. Gets off at Grand River. He's off at Grand River. Okay, so now that things are going to get things are going to get tight. He's going past police headquarters. Yeah, it's down the street from us, guys. He's on third. Ian's running outside to see if he can capture him as he comes by. He's going to literally, if he makes a right here coming up on Lafayette, he'll be coming right by Channel 4's front door. Here's DTE's headquarters building. Nope, he's going to go back the other way. Pursued by three different police cruisers. We're not sure which departments those are. It looks like a fourth one is joining there in the mid in the Michigan turnaround. Yep, we got a blockade right here. Now he's going to go up and over the curb. Woo! Wow! Now he's going the wrong way. Now things get truly dangerous because people who are coming down that street who don't know... Back on southbound 75. What what did they say about the description? No, I heard something about his tire or the driver or. Stand by. We do have this is a 
We've done this once before where we took an active chase and provided you with commentary from the newsroom. As we gather details, you find them out in real time uh, right here, live streaming on Facebook and or click on Detroit.com. It's um, the marriage of old style news gathering involving a chopper, a live microwave transmission and social media. And Local 4 WDIV is attempting to be, click on Detroit.com as well, attempting to be at the forefront of postmodern news gathering in the social media age. Again, small SUV so far evading police successfully for at least 40, 45 minutes, maybe even longer. We don't know why he's running. Multiple police cars in pursuit. Still on I-75. Seventy-five approaching Clark Street. Does he have a flat front tire? Is his left front tire flat? Yeah. Both of them or the left? Looks like the driver's side front tire is toast and he is on his rim. It's going to limit his mobility. He's going to pull over now and get out to run. We have over se uh, Interstate 75 traffic with multiple officers in pursuit running against traffic. Jumps up over a hood of a minivan. Officers try to get him. They've got the van surrounded. Five, six, seven. They've got him down in custody. Running on highway or against highway traffic. Climbing the hood and windshield of that SUV, of uh, that minivan right there. One of the most dramatic police chases you will ever see come to a conclusion right here live on Local 4, on Facebook Live, and live streaming on clickondetroit.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks like about nine different officers from different uh, different jurisdictions tackling one suspect as he tried to pull a superhero maneuver and literally run over the top of a minivan in the middle of interstate traffic. I don't think I have ever seen anything like that. Have you seen anything like that? I mean, this is... Incredible. You see this out of, like, for instance, Los Angeles from time to yeah. time. But uh, as far as here in the Motor City in Detroit, we have our occasional police chases. They don't happen that often. But for something of this, for something this dramatic, um, the unwitting innocent person driving this minivan, uh, we do not know what their instructions, as they just sort of creep north without the police pursuing them or stopping them or they told to pull forward off to the side of the road or are they just going to slowly drive away after having been involved in this major live news incident i don't think the officers realize that the van involved in this that the guy tried to run and basically leap over is slowly pulling away <laughs> up uh, exit 48 there and I don't think the chopper realizes it either because we're isolated now on the, on the suspect and all the law enforcement, but the minivan, where's the minivan going? Everyone forget, forgot about the minivan. <laughs> wow. Well, one would hope that minivan eventually pulls over and, and, and says, okay, uh, what do you want me to do? I, I, you know, there's the suspect there. Do we have more than one?
Once again, if you're just now joining us, uh, one of the more dramatic police chases you will ever see unfold in real time on uh, TV or social media, live streaming, whatever the case may be. Um, a suspect just... I understand that one of the local four photographers on the scene was able to shoot video up close of the arrest, so all of our footage will not be just from the chopper. Um, but if you're just, again, just joining us, this uh, looks like a Nissan, this small compact Nissan SUV crossover, fleeing police for the better part of 30, 40, 45 minutes, near collisions all across Detroit, up and down the highway, eventually pulls over to the side of the road, jumps out to run, leaps the median on 75, starts running into oncoming traffic. Now you and I both know that that's 80, 90 mile per hour traffic. Yeah. And at one point he came face to face with a, uh, a minivan and tried to literally hurdle the minivan by running up the hood, the windshield, got trapped on the roof, surrounded by initially six police, <coughs> excuse me, police officers who tackled him. Now the van that was involved has slowly crept away from the scene. Uh, nobody seems to have noticed that on the ground. And um, officers have the, at least one suspect in the back, back of a cruiser. Okay, so uh, the newsroom behind me has gone into, all right, the second stage of the news gathering operation, which is chase is over, guys in custody, vehicles stopped. We are going to obviously try to get sound from the uh, leading officer on the scene and uh, get some details on how this whole chase originated, why it originated, and uh, at this stage, whatever happened to the minivan. Yeah, I, who knows? So, Hopefully um, someone caught up we'll keep it. this uh, live stream going just as live pictures uh, and as information develops, I'm sure Brian will uh, jump on and, and give you an update if anything else comes of this. Oh, sure. So, it's going to do it for me. Um, have a great and safe weekend, everybody, and we'll see you back here live Monday morning on the 915-ish. for quite some time, hasn't it, Brian? I believe this is at least... This is at least 30 minutes old. Not sure the origin point of this. So far, I've not seen any police close to this compact SUV. This is southbound 75 at Clark.
an active uh, police chase going on. The suspect is fleeing on southbound 75. Uh, he is now in more or less southwest Detroit. The noise and the commotion you hear behind me is the newsroom in full active breaking news mode with various assignment editors, producers, and digital content providers, all monitoring scanners, taking phone calls. We have, I believe, a local four news vehicle following or trailing this fleeing suspect. What the suspect is uh, fleeing from, why he is being pursued at this point, I'm not sure we know. But this, this chase has been going on. He's still on 75. He did not take the lodge exit. We have an